who is uh, MD, PhD, and one of my co-workers, and he recently did a postdoc uh, by Professor Clark in Manchester, and uh, he will tell us about uh, the mechanism uh, uh, and the different uh, way to transform the mechanism of the behavior of prostate cancer metastasis. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Um, I think this is a rather complex, complicated title for, for Saturday morning, but the general idea of the project is to study how diet and lipid in diet and also statins may influence prostate cancer disease. So the, the difference in mortality rate in prostate cancer among the world raised the hypothesis that um, lifestyle, and especially diet, may influence uh, the disease. There is a famous um, paper, old paper from 1980, showing that Japanese going to America increase their risk of prostate cancer. So since then, there are a large number of publications trying to show a correlation between different type of diet and prostate cancer. But here this is a meta-analysis, a recent meta-analysis. There is nothing clear, but at least omega-6 essential fatty acids and omega-3 may be involved in prostate cancer. And how? It's not only a, probably a question of incidence of the disease, but probably more a question of, of the progression. So here, study with almost 300,000 patients, and they show no difference with the incidence of the disease, but omega-6 may increase the aggressivity of the disease with a more advanced prostate cancer, and inversely, omega-3 may decrease this, this um, aggressivity. So what are essential fatty acids? We cannot synthesize them, so they are found in food, so omega-6 are mainly found in um, fat animal, but also in some uh, oil you use to fry, like the sunflower and corn oil. And omega-3 are mostly found in fish. So we all know that uh, bone metastasis is, is the major factor for prostate cancer mortality and morbidity, with all the different skeletal-related events. And the idea of the project was to study how prostate cancer cells can leave the bloodstream and invade the bone marrow stroma. And one of the hypotheses was to see if omega-6 is able to increase this process and inversely omega-3 block it, can block it. So first, show you here, they used we used different uh, in vitro models and mostly bone marrow stroma, human primary bone marrow stroma. And when you remove adipocytes from bone marrow stroma, you are able to lose the chemoattractant effect of bone marrow stroma. And this chemoattractant effect can be restored by adding this omega-6 arachidonic acid. And now if you think about the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3, you can see when you add EPA, one of the main omega-3, you decrease the invasion here of PC3 cells towards AA. So the further step, uh, we'll not show too much molecular uh, experiment, but the next step was to identify how A is able to work, and we showed that several pathways known to be involved in prostate cancer are activated by AKT, the, uh, by um, arachidonic acid, such as the AKT, SARC, and FAC pathways. And to further go on to understand how A works, we identified a receptor named EPHA2 for ephrine receptor A2. This is a membranous receptor involved in cell motility. This receptor is not expressed in benign tissue, but increased in primary cancer tissue. And very briefly, we identified that this receptor is a target of the AKT pathway, which in turn regulates other pathways. We also started to study this, the expression of EPHA2, and we saw that the expression is increased, especially in bone metastasis, suggesting that the EPHA2 can be important during this process of invasion of bone marrow. We also studied in vivo in an animal, mo in an animal model, so you can inject PC3 cells in the heart of mice, 
and you can follow after the, so the systemic uh, projection of cells the number of and the number and the size of um, of uh, bone metastases and animal with a high uh, diet of omega-6 increase the tumor volume compared to animals with a diet rich in omega-3. So we are also interested in uh, the function, the putative function of statins in prostate cancer. As you may know, uh, statins have been suggested to, to, be in, to protect against, prostate, uh, not, uh, against cancer in general mortality but also in cancer, uh, prostate cancer. So we wanted a little bit to understand how it works. So we showed that this amoeboid phenotype driven by the small Roche DPAs, they have several isoforms, but this amoeboid phenotype is important for the extravasation process, especially to go across the bone marrow and arterial cells. And Simvastatin is able to decrease this phenotype. We use here MLC2, an amyloid marker, and we showed that MLC2 is decreased by simvastatin, but also uh, the AKT pathway. So in conclusion, for sure, there is no clear um, uh, sign clinical significance about the omega-6 or statin use in, in prostate cancer, but for sure we need more uh, clinical trial and preclinical study. And I think, but it's a dream, that if we can increase the overall survival of patients with prostate cancer just by giving uh, advice on diet, uh, that could be really appealing. And finally, we'd like to thank the, the team of Professor Clark in Manchester, where I spent uh, two years and a an half. And in Manchester, the weather is a little bit always like today. <laughs> And thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> yeah, um, great. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions on the subject of um, dietary manipulation for prevention? So um, we just need a microphone um, over, over there. Yeah, thank perfect. You. Very nice, Thomas. Good morning. Uh, Bill Fair did a long time ago an experiment just feeding different diets of fat. So when do you think this will have an impact? Would you have to start very young, or do you think it will suffice if you start using statins? Yeah, that's, that's a big question. Minute. If we should start at 20 or, or when we have, you have the diagnosis of the prostate cancer, but probably the most appealing situation would be the, the localized high-risk prostate cancer patients to, to, to hope that we can decrease the progression of the disease at that moment. Okay, thanks. I've got a couple of questions whilst other people prepare theirs. We've got a few more minutes. So, so in terms of these studies, the, um, your earlier slides were quoting prostate cancer incidence as the kind of clinically meaningful endpoint. I just wonder whether you thought that was a reasonably appropriate endpoint to measure these dietary manipulations. Uh, and I suppose the question is, should we be using some other notion of disease, such as proportion of patients with clinically significant disease? given that incidence is so dependent on yeah. you know, work-up strategies, number of biopsies, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, probably the incidence is, is less important than the, the aggressivity of the disease. Okay, so you would, as we go forward, and you're planning these large population studies, you would advocate a different endpoint? Yeah, probably if you, if you imagine that you have a patient with a high-risk localized disease, to, we can measure the time of progression until you have clinical metastasis. Okay. with manipulation of, of the diet. Yeah, microphone here at the front. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, very nice work. Have you had the chance to look at uh, the tumor heterogeneity, in the, in the, especially in the animal model? And in other words, look whether the response is similar, whether there's a kind of difference in the mutational landscape of the, the tumors that will and will not respond at the tumor level, because I, I guess that in, the, in this model, you're going to get some heterogeneity despite starting with the same kind of cells, isn't it? Yeah, for, for this model, we used just one cell line. So we used PC3 cells in mice. So, so again, we know that the AKT pathway is frequently mutated in the, in the prostate cancer. 
but we, we did not study the, uh, until now the, the, the bone mats in mice. That's the okay. Um, about the statins, as far as I can tell, nobody quite knows how statins work. Um, people have postulated anti-inflammatory mechanisms, etc. Which, which mechanism of action associated with statins do you think is relevant for um, altering the natural history of prostate cancer progression? So our uh, hypothesis is not just that uh, statins decrease cholesterol level, probably that there is a mechanism in the cells, in, in cancer cells, that decrease the, the modified post-traditional uh, signaling. So that's why you can modulate signaling pathway with statins. Okay, so it's a specific and, action to that. Yeah, and probably also you, you modify the, the composition of the plasma membrane and where all the signaling start, or most of the signaling starts. Okay, great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.